Wilson was raped and murdered. Her killer never brought to justice. We have no justice. This is the man who was acquitted of her murder, convicted rapist Jason Vanderbarn. Her family is angry that recordings of an alleged confession by Vanderbarn to an undercover police officer were thrown out by the trial judge. The acquittal of a young Gold Coast woman accused of murdering her mother and trying to kill her father has left many wondering if anyone will be brought to justice for the crime. Tonight, we can reveal what the jury was not told in Kaihana Hussain's murder trial. A free woman one day into hiding the next. Kaihana Tassin Hussain was acquitted yesterday of her mother's murder and the attempted slaying of her father. The 20-year-old is now going to start a new life with her boyfriend in Adelaide. Kayana's always maintained her father did it. Police say there's only ever been one suspect. Here's some evidence police gathered that wasn't allowed to be considered in the trial. It's alleged they found a scrapbook owned by Kayana containing a four-page internet guide entitled How to Kill Your Parents. Police also say they intercepted messages from Kayana to her boyfriend. One found in an internet chat room saying, It's all over. It's make or break time. I either get freed for life or I go to jail for life. Another in a recorded conversation, Even if I do end up in jail for the rest of my life, it is worth it. Specialist medical evidence showed her father's stab wounds were caused with homicidal intent and unlikely to have been self-inflicted. It's been revealed today Des Campbell, the man who murdered his new wife by pushing her off a cliff, used to be a corrupt Victorian police officer. The jury was not told about Des Campbell's former career or fraud charges against him. He nearly got away with the perfect crime. The jury voted 11 to 1 that Des Campbell murdered his wife Janet Fisicaro by pushing her off this cliff south of Sydney during a camping trip. Did you have anything to do with the death of Jan? I did. I was mad I did a you camping. The verdict, a relief for police and Janet's family. What the jury didn't know is this smooth-talking, gold-digging ambulance paramedic was also a former police officer. Des Campbell was a Victorian police detective for nine years. He left in 94 with a two-month suspended jail term for assault and admitted to wide-scale corruption. Campbell then moved to England to serve with Surrey Police, but left after three years accused of sexual assault. He returned to Australia as a paramedic in Daniloquin, where he met wealthy widow Janet. They married in secret in 2004, while Campbell was having affairs with three other women. Instead of attending her funeral, he went on holiday with his new girlfriend. Good evening. The families of the six teenagers killed when hit by a car near Mildura two years ago have started returning home from a court case which brought them no joy or closure. A jury found the driver not guilty of culpable driving, a verdict which has stunned the town. For two years, the people of Mildura have lived without an answer to what happened on the night of February 18, 2006. Now the Supreme Court's found Thomas Tao was not guilty of culpable driving. You know, a guy's got off killing six kids. It's wrong. It's wrong. 
end of the day, he's going to get out of jail, see his kids. I'm not. That's wrong. The, the law has to change. The law has to change. Three days of jury deliberations provided a mixed verdict. For Thomas Tow's family, it was welcome news. But while relieved, they left the Supreme Court with heavy hearts. Say sorry to all the parents. We're going to say, but it's a big relief. Tow embraced his lawyer, Robert Richter, after the jury found him not guilty of six counts of culpable driving. The jury system always gets it right. I can't comment. Thank you. The parents of those killed in the collision were overwhelmingly disappointed. Among them, Terry Hurst, who lost his son Shane, and daughter Abby in the 2006 smash. Any initial reaction? Oh, just disappointed, mate, and uh, I think the law stinks. Tao was speeding and had his young son on his lap, a dangerous combination which proved fatal. The five-week trial heard testimony from teenagers who'd attended the Mildura party and those who'd been injured in the collision. Some claimed Tao was travelling as fast as 140 kilometres an hour. Tao's lawyer argued it took a second or two of inattention on a curve in the road, his client unable to see in the darkness to produce a tragedy of such proportion. He asked if it was gross criminal negligence or a case of human frailty. Ultimately, the jury accepted the latter. The victim's families are in the process of travelling back to Mildura. It makes our kids' walk not work very much. Have they been denied justice? I think so. A disturbing report has found 95% of child sex offenders in Australia escape conviction. eyes of Australia's political leaders and lawmakers are on the rundown settlement of Arakan today. Because of the terrible thing that happened to a 10-year-old Aborigine girl here, and this judge's decision not to send the nine males who gang raped the girl to jail. Controversially, Judge Sarah Bradley told the nine who'd admitted rape that she accepted the young victim had probably agreed to have sex with all of you. Words politicians and Aboriginal rights groups are now lining up to condemn.
An Eagleby father who bashed a childhood friend who just molested his son during a state of origin party has been acquitted by a district court jury. They found any reasonable parent would react the same way. This father took the law into his own hands and won. My whole life is my children. There's nothing else. My wife, my children. Yeah, that's it. We can't identify him, but we can show you the pedophile he bashed, Shane Davidson, a childhood friend who molested the man's then 10-year-old son. When the boy's father found out, it was like he'd seen a ghost. He was white and crying and angry. A triple O call captured the crisis on Origin Night last June. Just try and get all the knives away from him. Get any weapons that you have away from him. The police are on their way. Davidson's cheek, eye and nose were shattered. Without surgery, he would have been deformed and had double vision for life. The case came down to whether any normal, reasonable person would react in the same way. In the end, the jury agreed any parent would under the same circumstances. The child molester pleaded guilty but didn't spend one day behind bars. His actions have imprisoned a young boy who was worried his father wasn't coming home. victory today for actor Matthew Newton. He's managed to convince a Sydney judge to quash his conviction for assaulting former girlfriend Brooke Satchwell. On Australia Day, acting sergeant Shane Anstead pulled over the former PM for allegedly running a red light in the city. With no independent witnesses and no cameras, it all came down to Mr Keating's word against that of two police officers. The magistrate said she couldn't find beyond reasonable doubt that Mr Keating was guilty. Ironically, Mr Keating admits driving in a bus lane when he went through the intersection. That would have meant a fine over $200, but he wasn't booked. The prosecutor certainly was not intimidated as he tore into Mr Keating, accusing him of being impatient and of exaggerating. Mr Keating didn't take the bait and replied coolly, the light was yellow. There was no doubt in the world. The magistrate was won over. She dismissed the charge. Some so-called ordinary people are wondering, could it happen to them? If it was an ordinary puncher, I'm sure they would have got a fine and probably a few points taken off their licence. Justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere.